All right, folks, so it's time to continue on this build of the uh, Re Amiga 1200. So uh, the last time we seemingly successfully <laughs> installed all the uh, ICs that we needed to uh, connect to the uh, serial out into the computer and to see that the uh, diagnostic ROMs were indeed starting. And now the next step is to actually populate those RAMs. Okay, wh what's going on? I'm a ninja. Yeah, that's not in Yes, it is. Okay. You're a ninja. Okay, um, uh, why are you a ninja? I'm following the way. Y the way you're f you're following you you're following the, the PCB, PCB way. way. Uh, yeah, I can't. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> PCB way offers manufacturing services along with part assembly. They also offer a number of fantastic services like CNC, metal sheet fabrication, 3D printing, and even injection molding, turning it into a one-stop shop for all your DIY projects. So go to PCBWay, upload your project files, and get an instant quote. And thank you to them for sponsoring this video. I'm keeping the money, Ali. <laughs> These are going to be interesting um, to populate because uh, they are SMD components, but uh, those legs are like these guys, um, whatever they're called, I forget. Uh, and they're going to be a pain to solder. The, these are probably the hardest one to solder in place. Um, not just because it's those, uh, what a PLCC, something like that, but because there's very little clearance on each side. The uh, way that Chucky recommends to do it is to tin those uh, pads, which uh, I was doing for these anyway, and then uh, use a, a, a hot air station to just melt the solder and then finishing uh, touches with uh, the iron. I don't, ha I have one of those, but I'm, I'm, I'm still afraid of it and it's not great. It's, it's fine if I want to remove something from a PCB that I, I don't really care that much, but I'm, I'm still afraid to use it. So I'm going to try first to just thin those, put a ton of uh, flux as usual, and then maybe just use my uh, soldering iron to put them in place. Um, he recommends doing those one by one and then to uh, SSH again every time to check that the uh, RAM is connected properly. So I'm going to do that and I will every time also, I will actually check for continuity uh, to make sure that the top here is connected to whatever other pads because they're all in parallel for at least for data and address lines and then um see where the um uh, you know the write enable output enables are going uh, to and check continuity on those wherever is going to so a uh, little bit of checking i do have the schematics here so those four i see and you can see the um, uh, these are the uh, data line address lines and here yeah output enable write enable uh, uh, RAS and CS. So just check. We'll just check every time uh, for each IC. So uh, we're going to start with those guys and just go work our way uh, down. Right, so we got uh, this one finally in place. Um, they are painful, and actually, you can see this one is slightly crooked. But uh, God, this is worse <laughs> if I look at it like that. Uh, I'll try to do a better job on the other ones, and the other ones might be even trickier because this one had a lot of space on each side, but and uh, the, the space between uh, those two here is going to be tricky. So I have my serial uh, rig back into my laptop here. And if you look at the diagnostic uh, ROM uh, output, so you need to look for this address here, 100,000 uh, up. And essentially it's writing, uh, so if, if, you, if you look above, it's writing 000, and here that puts, uh, it reads FFF. So that's what we should see when there's no RAM. But now we've uh, that RAM in, it's writing AAAA. And it should ha read AA on the first uh, four uh, bytes here. Uh, so we can see that consistent, uh, yeah, across everywhere. Perfect. So that means that RAM is uh, is soldered properly, or at least there's no uh, there's no issues uh, with this RAM. So we can continue. So we'll put the second one.
All right, second ram is in, and this time uh, we should be looking right at the beginning of the... Uh, yeah, so these address, the right and the first four uh, bytes here, uh, right at the beginning of the uh, address um, uh, the, the address map. And yeah, I think that's all good. Uh, zero, a five, five, five. I'm just going to go down a little bit. Um, oops, sorry. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Third RAM, and uh, this time I probably won't film it. It's the same process. So um, I find if I actually bring this uh, a little bit more towards this edge, uh, it gives me enough room. Uh, to do it with the uh, soldering iron um, between the two. So, not too bad. It could have been a lot worse, <laughs> actually. So, yeah, pretty happy with that. I'm going to clean this guy and then move on. Oh, man, was this a pain and a half. Um, so, essentially, I was getting uh, all the address uh, workings for this one, but this one, I just couldn't quite get it to work. And... Um, and actually, because I've, I've pushed every single one a little bit further, I made myself uh, my uh, um, life harder here on this edge, especially. Uh, but I think it's all there now. And by the looks of it, um, yeah, I'm getting 40, uh, 40 blocks of memory. Perfect, perfect. And all good. Green, okay. There you go. Whew, that took a while. Um, for a while, I was only, I was getting fails on the. Uh, memory that, um, read write um, as if this guy wasn't properly connected, and indeed uh, the, uh, the the supply uh, line just wasn't quite soldered properly. Once I got that working, it kept um, looking at uh, just eight uh, blocks. Sorry about the noise, and then um, I just and then it would crash, and I couldn't get it to continue. So I just double checked everything and redid all my um, solder uh, points and. It's working now, so I believe the next step is to actually put the uh, the uh, video deck and um, a few other ICs around it, and uh, hopefully get some uh, video signal out of this. So with this in place, next uh, I think we need to populate uh, this guy here. There are uh, six diodes over here uh, that we need to populate. And quite possibly, if we don't get a proper video signal, I think this guy um, in some cases needs to be populated. <laughs> it always makes me nervous. Um, uh, stuff like that. But yeah, we'll start with those. We'll see if we get a signal through uh, at the RGB port. And uh, maybe we need to populate this guy then afterwards. But I think that's enough for an RGB signal. Then we can look into maybe getting the VGA and composite uh, working uh, down the line. Ultimately, I mean, RGB is what I'm going to use for this. Yeah, before we continue, just a, a few more comments on these guys. Um, just again, take your time and take, um, take the time and extra effort to actually check continuity and double check with your uh, schematics. I know it's tedious and it's annoying, but it'll save you uh, most likely time in resoldering stuff, you know, not being sure what's um, soldered properly or not. So uh, what I used, I did is I checked continuity on, on each of the pads, check that it, it matched, you know, on the next one or whatever. And then for the couple of lines that aren't connected or, um, or the ones that, sorry, uh, that um, like the chip enable, the write enable, that kind of stuff. Um, you can check with the output, with, you know, trace them back to where they're going. Or you could actually just check very carefully if you've um, thin enough uh, probes on your multimeter uh, that the, the pad and the top, you know, discontinuity between the bottom of the pad and the top. Um, Having said all that, I still had some issues. Uh, some of them were because even though there was contact between the pad and the uh, IC, it wasn't uh, soldered properly. So I, I, it was sometimes uh, testing fine, sometimes failing. Uh, and whenever 
I, I press on the some of the chips I could see the different results so um, just go over it a few times make sure um, make sure that you can see clearly see that there's a solder and then um, that you're getting continuity but yeah these are tedious they're probably the toughest ones um, on this whole build and uh, there's quite a few uh, SMD stuff but these uh, these definitely uh, were the, the, the hardest ones uh, to get right but we got there in the end anyway, I know I'm gonna sound like a broken record but just follow the guide uh, once more follow the guide Chucky went through the trouble of putting a very detailed uh, guide online just make sure you follow it, you follow his instructions. Uh, otherwise, you just end up with a big paperweight. We're nearly at the point where we can claim that we have a working machine. So let's keep going um, until we get a video signal. For after Owlet created the but he said, realized that these creatures were indeed smaller dwarves. From then on, the elves would leave them alone and make for its existence when they attacked it was their hatred of the knoll by the petty dwarves who still lingered there. The dwarves are greatly compensated. However, their chieftain, Ming, attempts to murder Finrod in his sleep. He will become the last surviving member of his kind. For it is said that the great dwarves despise the petty dwarves. Indeed, as we will see throughout the history of Elven, they give Finrod the name Thorell. Nargathron had recently been destroyed and King Fingal of Doria has come into possession of they have become obsessed with the necklace, and in exchange for their labor, they demand Fingal give them the darkest one, the real self, the real group of green elves in ambushing their dwarves near Sarn Athra. Both elves and dwarves alike would travel east to the lands of Eriador and the all right, so that's our video DAC. We got these diodes in here and we got our, um, what was it, uh, 139. I've just plugged in the uh, RGB uh, and there you go. We got output on the video and the uh, ROMs, uh, uh, ROM are indeed uh, loading up. It crashes here, it's normal. We need to populate that um, uh, 7486 uh, right here. By the way, for people, this is what you see when you power on the Amiga, it'll come up, it'll flash for a while uh, as it's doing all the memory uh, checks. So this is all the RAM checks that we're seeing online and all the different checks uh, on uh, the serial output. And uh, there you go. And there you go. Okay. Um, perfect. So that's with the uh, AT, uh, uh, LS86 uh, populated here now. So uh, one problem here, we can't do any of the tests because first we don't have a keyboard. So I think the uh, the option is to actually uh, do all the tests from the serial output. So I still need the laptop. I still need the USB uh, serial um, uh, thing. And we're going to control the uh, diagram through my laptop here. And, uh, and with the keyboard on the laptop. I think that's the idea. So actually it's even more simple than that. All we need to populate is the 1489 here. Uh, so I'm gonna do, do that now and plug the serial back in. And I think essentially we've done page three of, uh, once we've done that, we've done page three of uh, Chucky's, uh, Chucky's guide. So that's great. I mean, great progress on this one. Um, delighted. The Rams certainly were <laughs> the, the uh, the, the 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 uncertain uh, factor for me, um, but it's all done. You can see light here now is uh, is on. Yeah, we got more stuff flashing up. It's great. There you go, that's, that's uh, last I see, uh, well not last, but last for this uh, part. Uh, as you can see, I every time I uh, solder something, I use isopropyl alcohol. Um, and it's, um, there's there some, so some people say it can be conductive. Uh, some, some type of flux can be conductive. I don't think this one uh, is, but what flux can do, it can actually corrode uh, and I've seen that happen on arcade uh, boards. It can actually corrode over time uh, some of the metal, uh, which then 
um, become sort of conductive because they're so close together and the corrosion can actually ju jump from one uh, pin to the other. So always clean your flux. Um, it shouldn't be conductive, but always clean your flux uh, and do it as you go. It's just a lot easier. Anyway, uh, let's test this. So I'm going to power on the laptop once more and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can control indeed the uh, diagram from the laptop. All right, so I got Siri connected. I'm gonna power the Amiga and, oh, there you go. And we're seeing, so that's the ROM checks uh, flashing green. Uh, it's doing perfect. And here it's telling us, uh, use Siri collection, hold any key. And there you go. So you have to press a, a key when it tells you when those dots are coming. And now we should be able to control, exactly. Oh, that's great. So now I should be able to... <laughs> ah, this is awesome. Okay. Perfect. Well, uh, page three <laughs> of Chucky's guide is uh, done. I think I'm going to stick to my uh, uh, decision and rule of just doing one video per page of the guide. The guide. That's It's plenty. Again, um... I mean, I'm pretty happy. This is my first uh, big SMD project. Uh, I've never done anything like that, so it's, I'm 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 really really stoked, really happy. First, that uh, I managed to get it together and that it's working and it seems to be working fine uh, so far. So we're going to continue. Uh, but again, if you have any desire to do this build, I cannot stress this enough. Follow the guide and take your time and double check every solder point. Um, it doesn't hurt. It only take a bit of extra time, and it's it's just it's worth all the hassle down the line. Um, perfect, folks. Uh, we're gonna leave this here. Thank you again for watching. I uh, hope this was interesting. I know some of you have actually expressed that they wanted to build that now. I'm I'm very humble that you know it inspired some people to start their build. So let me know how yours get, is getting on as, as well, because I'm just curious, uh, and I'd love um, I'd love to see more of Shucky's boards around. Because uh, he's taken the time to make these and uh, he's taking the time to provide guides for all of his builds as well. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching and see you next time.